Hi guys and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Kim. I currently live in Japan where I do lifestyle and traveling videos. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for all your love and support. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and turn on your post notification bell. That way you'll never miss another video. And without further ado, let's jump into this video. So from the title, you guys already know what we're talking about. We're talking about things to consider before moving overseas. Moving overseas is a big step and it's a lot to consider. So I do commend you for making that first step of realizing, hey, this is something that I'm thinking about and I'm going to try to help you as best as I can to move through each week breaking apart different categories that we should be diving in. We're going to go into details talking about every step because it is a life-changing event and life-changing events, we can't just rush over it with a 20 minutes video. At least I hope you're not doing that with your life um, because this decision is going to affect everything else that's happening in your life. So last week we started the conversation on how to become an expert. We talk about the what, the why, and the where. And hopefully you guys have a already started conditioning your mind figuring out those things so now we're going to go ahead and talk about now that you have figured those out and if you have not yet seen that video go ahead and check right here to see how you can become an expert if you have not yet seen that video now that you know the why the what and the where we'll go ahead and talk about things to consider before your actual move so let's just get started so to me there are three types of experts okay so number one is that i ain't never going back experts and we call those the lifetimers and these experts they have completely they're done with their home country they don't want to they don't have no financial ties to their home country if they have debt or whatever they're not paying it they're just trying to start a new life in their new country to gain some kind of citizenship that's their goal so then there's number two the i'm here for a good time not a long time expat and that's aka me aka the searching expat so this expat is searching for something whether it's something professionally they're searching for some internally they're on a search for something the search is different for each person they're essentially living in two different worlds so they still have all their ties to their home country because they know they have to go back home so they're just it's like the, the name says they're here for a good time but not a long time so that's number two expect and the third type of expat that we have is the, I'm here, I hate it here, but it awards me a good life. We call these the silver liners expat. So these are the people who, they hate living overseas. They wish they could be back home with their family, their friends. They don't like the culture, they don't like the food, whatever it might be. However, the lifestyle that the job or being an expat provides for them is one that would be difficult in their home country. So those are the three type of expats that we'll be talking about. So these tips that I'm giving you are going to be catered more towards searchers and the silver liners. Those two categories can really take away from these tips. So the most important tip I would say to consider before leaving is making sure all your legal documents are not about to be expired in the near future. So anywhere from six months to a year, your passport, your driver's license, all your legal documents, you need those not to be expiring anytime in the near future. Because again, you're going to be away from your home country. The last thing you want to do is to go ahead and pay for or a ticket to go back home so you could straighten your driver's license number two you want to go to your doctor get get a physical done get all your blood work done before coming that way it gives you some if something goes wrong here you have a point of reference to say okay before I left this is what it was and this is what it is right now um, especially if you're going to be moving to a country where you're not speaking the same language it takes a little time before you get settled in the system where you're going to say I'm going to see the doctor I'm going to the dentist I'm going to do certain things but just make sure that you're in tip-top health before leaving your country you want diplomas and transcripts so you want copies of your diplomas and you want um, copies of your transcript because you're moving overseas and you have not attended a university in that country what you find is they need to evaluate your transcript evaluate your coursework to make sure that the the accreditation that you have is one that is sufficient or on par to what they have in their country. So you want to have extra copies of those on hand. Think of the unexpected. So you want to cover all your bases as much as possible. So it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. 
Now we're kind of going to get into financials a little bit. So the searchables normally navigate through both worlds where they have this life overseas, but their life back home is still continuing as well. So simultaneously, they're doing two things. So getting a power of attorney, a POA, is going to be very important for your searchable people. So what a POA is, is power of attorney and what it is is a document is a legal document that allows the person allows the person who is the expat to go ahead and give authority to another person to act on their behalf so this can be done at your bank any legal documents that need to be signed whoever you have enacted to be your power of attorney they can go ahead and sign those documents and handle business for you on your behalf so that helps tremendously checkbooks um i know i know i know i know many of us have uh, like some people don't even know how to fill out a check but trust me it's worth having checkbooks um i can't tell you how many times because even though you have your person at home it's very important as an expert that you have somebody that you're going to be relying on at home back home but you want to also relieve some of the stress that you are putting on that person so you do as much as you can for yourself so sometimes you'll find out you could go ahead and print forms here fill the form out and but you need a money order or a check or a official check or something towards that um, something towards that effect that needs to be sent off with that document but if you don't have any checks you're going to have to rely on that person like hey I'm sending this document can you then go to Walmart and get me a money order so here it is they're waiting by the mailbox to get your form then they have to go ahead and go to Walmart get your money order then they have to go ahead and open up the document that you sent put in that money order mail off your document and more than likely they don't have stamps so they got to go to the post office so it's too much so you want to go ahead and alleviate some of that pressure or some of that things that you might need by doing it yourself so having checks allow you to do that you print off your document and you just go ahead and send it one time off with your check and boom you're done you don't have to rely on that person that's back home to do like little mundane stuff that you could have done yourself your mail so if you're a searcher your mail so you're still going to be having your all your documents still coming in because you still are essentially living to life so you want to have your mail i don't know you're going to have to forward your mail to someone again that you trust and that person is going to have to sort through your mail what you might want to also consider is having USPS informed delivery and what they do is they email you each time mail is delivered to that house or wherever it is that you're sending your mail and you'll get access you get a picture of every item that was put in your mailbox so again it's not going to be left on the person that is back home to be sorted because they have their own mail to sort out so you don't have to wait for wait on them or rely on them to sort out a mail or whatever so if you know that you're waiting on your 1099 statements or whatever it is that you have going on back home um you can just go ahead and be like hey xyz came in the mail today can you go ahead and open that take a picture of it xyz it's all about convenience and you got to also think about that person that's helping you you don't want to be like, like a leech and like suck them dry and whatever so you want to make it as convenient for both parties as much as possible set up travel notice on your debit card and credit cards so no you don't necessarily have to be using your cards from back home overseas but again i'm just one of those people who I think about things that can happen you want to think about for the future so if it is that I ever need to use my debit card or use my credit cards I have travel notices that I have set up on there that hey I'm out of the country these are the countries I know that I will be traveling in Asia so if you see any charges in XYZ places anywhere in Asia that's me do not block my card for fraud XYZ now that's just me and that's just because I just like to be prepared but I also think it's important because you never Never know when there's going to be an emergency and you might need to use your funds from back home suspend your phone line so I still have my um, American phone here 
um, I've had the same number for over 10 years so there was no way I was going to get rid of my number because all my networking contacts is in this phone my whole life is in this phone so I wasn't going to just get rid of that because I know I'm going to be back home so the last thing that I want to do is to take up this phone and you know you get a new phone you could transfer in the number but they won't have your new number and call somebody that I know could possibly help me that I've been networking with and they're like who is this and I have to go ahead and re-establish communication with them while if I pick up this phone I call anybody in there they keep their same numbers you know so it's my name is going to come up my contact information they know exactly who they're talking to and it's just easier so I would say suspend your phone line or keep it going I still have mine going because again just in case I don't know so depending on the length of your stay you might want to consider getting storage again you're going to a new country and you're not sure if it is that you're going to even like this country I can't stress this enough going on vacation and living in a country is two different things watching someone on screen talking about their life in a country and experiencing that yourself is two different things I would say you want to make your own informed decisions and the only way to do that is through you going through that process so you don't know if you're going to like it you might want to go ahead and get storage because if you get storage um you don't like it you try it out for six months you're like you know what this country is not for me you can always go back home and you'll have all your stuff and i know what some people are going to be saying well kim i plan to sell all my assets to afford my travels well my dear if that's how you're planning to afford your travels i will tell you that you need to save some more because what you don't want to do is get here and feel stuck because you don't have that exit strategy that I've been talking about since last week. So if it is, and hear, hear me out, just hear me out for a second. So if it is that you go ahead, you're here, you like it, you decide that, hey, I want to stay here. You have that storage. Your person, your contact person back home can then go ahead and sell all your items in storage, cancel your storage lease, and then you'll still have that money to access for travel or whatever it is. But the last thing you want to do is to set up yourself in terms of saying, I'm just going to sell everything because I want my money to travel and to start this new life. You come, you hate it, and then you have no furniture. I mean, your bedroom set alone is like three grand. And what, you gonna sell it and get like one G for it, if that. Do you have three grand to go ahead and re like repurchase new bedroom furniture and all those things that you're selling? So I think you have to like look on it from a practical standpoint to see where you are and just look inside yourself. I just say better to be safe than sorry. Or if you have family with a garage or like a storage container or something in the back, you could do that. Where will you live when you return? Again, this has to deal with the exit strategy. So before you move somewhere, you got to think about where you're going back. So where are you going to live? Essentially, a lot of people, they pack up everything, they sell everything and there's nowhere for them to go when they go back home. You know, you're welcome on somebody's culture like three months, but what's going to happen after that, boo? Now, everybody's willing to let you stay in their house for long periods of time. So before you come, you have to think about, okay, if I leave this country, if I leave my home country, I move overseas, will I be working enough money for when I exit and get back home? for where I'll be able to sustain myself to, to pay for rent or my mortgage or whatever it is that you're going on, where are you going to stay and how are you going to sustain yourself with going back home. And that goes into a next thing of how easy is it to get a job in your home country? I know a lot of people, they'll just leave their jobs. Is it going to be that you leave your job and you're overseas for three, four years, you go back home? How easy is it for you to get a next job and how long can you sustain yourself without getting income? So those are also things to consider. So also do not burn your bridges because that network, networking guys is so powerful. So you want to go ahead and keep in contact with those people that you have been networking with to make sure when you go back, you could just, it's nothing but a phone call and like, hey, I learned the other day that um, this is, this is how you know you're old. If you're holding the phone this way and not this way, um, but yeah, you just want to. <laughs> I can't even do it the other way. You just want to like take up the phone and call somebody and be like, hey, I'm back home. This is my qualifications, this, 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 and that. 
let me know where I need to be. So you want to keep in mind those things as well. The last and most important tip that I have for you guys is to make sure you know yourself prior to moving overseas. So I know you guys have heard that, oh, go overseas and travel to find yourself. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, 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 no. You are going to be in a new country. You're going to be in a new place, new people. You don't know anything that's going here. So you don't even know yourself. And you're going to take on all these new things around you. And then some people might say, well, that's how I explore. Yeah, and that's how you end up strung out on drugs too. Because you go ahead and explore and your little butt don't know when to stop. So if you know yourself, you know your limits and you know what exactly your morals are. You know exactly what you stand for. So when somebody take crap to you, you can be like, no, that's not me. Like, no, thank you, but no thank you. So I, I think it's important to know yourself and... It's not just about your morals and your ethics and knowing yourself. But when you move to a new country, sometimes you're different. You're different. You're the alien, you know. You are now the alien. You're not from that place. You, the way that you dress, the way that you smell, the way that you, you, you do your hair, your style, your, your body. Everything might be different from that country's um, whole perspective of how things should be. Or how they do things. So can you, if you don't know yourself, it might be difficult when you get the stares or you get the laughter or people start about you. If you're not confident in who you are, you will not survive as an expat. You need to be confident in yourself because you're going into a new job. You're standing in that job as a foreigner like I am here and you need to listen to me and I know what I'm doing. And that, that requires a level of confidence and a level of knowing who you are, what you are, what you're about that you need in order to be a successful expat. So I would say before you come, know yourself, know who you are. And please, 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 please. Do not take somebody else's experiences and try to make them yours to say, oh, this is how it will be for me. Again, it's important for you to be true to yourself, to know who you are as a person. And really, this, this is a big decision. And I know like some people have been messaging me on Instagram, Kim Dix Diary right here. And they're like, I'm ready to go, but um, it's, I, I just need to do X, Y, Z. And it seems like it's taking a long time. It, it is going to take a while. It's not something that you just get up one morning and like, oops, all right, I'm going to go on this flight and I'm going to be an expert. That's not how it works. It's time consuming. It takes work. It, it takes information. It takes research. It, it's going to take time, guys. So don't give up the process. As I said, I'm going to be as detailed as I can with you guys to give you all the information. So we're going to start wide and then we're going to start going in narrow, um, getting more narrow as we go along to maybe expats in Japan and how to navigate the way from overseas to Japan. But right now, I think it's important for you to have not your blinders on, but to see worldwide everywhere that you can see. That way you have information for wherever you can go and not just Japan. It's... Like I said in the last video, how many countries? Comment down below. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, turn on your post notification bell. And I really hope this video was somewhat helpful for you in helping you gain clarity and providing you with more thought-provoking information that can help you go along in your journey to being one step closer towards being an expat. As usual, thank you guys. I'll see you next week. What is this? This is Tuesday. I'll see you next Sunday for Traveling Sunday. See you. Bye.